Have you ever thought about the shape of TVs? Many TVs, like this one behind me, consist of four right angles, four sides, and are often a ratio of four by three or 16 by nine. But have you ever asked yourself why this is the case? Have you ever asked why TVs aren't circular or triangular or diamondular? This would be a pretty stupid question to ask because it's pretty obvious to me and other educated individuals on this topic that TV screens were originally made to view the contents of cameras, so images or videos that they took. And cameras recorded images and videos in a square or rectangular form. In fact, they were invented by a man named Telly, who was fed up with not being able to see the images his camera was capturing, so he invented monitors to solve that issue. He made them to match the shape and size of the output of cameras at the time. The early screen technology actually required larger screens to view larger images, so taking pictures of large objects such as a house or mountain required massive screens in order to preview the image. Fun fact about Telly, he was actually blind from birth. The history could have gone many ways. What if cameras happened to record round images? Would monitors have been the same? I mean, we humans view in an ovular shape because of our circular eyeballs. So why don't we capture and view media in the same shape? If our monitors did show images in a shape with no sides or no corners, how would pixels contour to that shape? Would they follow a grid like screens today, or would they follow a circular pattern that meets in the middle? To answer this, we might think about how TVs fit in our homes. Currently, a nice rectangular flat screen such as this one fits very nicely within my house and many of yours. An upright screen will align nicely with the upright structure of the walls in my home. And the flat level surface of a table is perfect for a TV to fit flushly on top of it. But as a political debatist might say, is the correlation the causation or vice versa? Some people believe that screens are not angular to fit nicely in our homes, but rather that houses themselves were designed to have four walls and level surfaces so that TVs would fit well within them. This isn't an entirely ridiculous theory. If TVs were designed to fit in our houses, think of our ancient ancestors. Humans used to live in uneven, rough shelters such as caves. So if screens were made with the home design in mind, why don't we have abstract screen sizes that contour to bumpy, rocky surfaces, like in a caveman's den? Plus, not all caves are the same. It would be impossible to design TVs around the design of our houses when all the houses are just randomly generated, bumpy, rocky surfaces. This leads to the idea that we make our houses and living spaces around the shapes of TVs and not the other way around. But all of this seems pretty stupid to discuss when we already know that cameras and the shape of the images they take is the actual reason behind why TVs are rectangles or squares. So maybe the question we should be asking is, why do cameras take square pictures? See, the idea of cameras came from our species' desire not to capture and remember specific things or times, but rather from our inherent need to look at ourselves. In ancient Greece, vainness and self-centeredness ran rampant, and all the citizens of the land would gather around the river Nile and peer into the water for a glimpse of themselves in the reflection. But as people became more and more self-conscious of their looks, they began to get a bit picky with what reflection they would refer to. Some people found the rivers too wavy and looked for small puddles or ponds for reflections, and among those people, some got even more choosy. The most pompous among them would often complain that round puddles made them look fat, and long puddles made them look too skinny. Of course, demand creates supply, and it wasn't too long until merchants decided to start selling portable puddles of varying shapes. They would fill various vases and pans with water, some round, some triangular, and some square. And they found that this square shape sold the best. We don't know exactly why this is the case, but we can assume that the square ones sold well because more people found the shape flattering compared to the other shapes. Seeing as humans tend to find squarish, sharp-angled faces and shoulders to be attractive traits, this does make some biological sense. Whatever the case, these portable puddles eventually evolved into mirrors, and those eventually evolved into cameras. But we can't say that the case is solved, because some people still prefer round mirrors, and some people even prefer round lens filters to their Instagram photos. Heck, there was a very long era where pirates used only round telescopes to scout out land so that they could more easily convert what they saw onto round maps and globes. But clearly, the technology eventually landed on squares and rectangles, and that's where we are today. But shouldn't technology improve and evolve into optimal form, instead of simply staying how it happened to be when our more primitive selves invented it? Well, coincidentally, squares are more optimal anyway because of a little thing called a pixel. A very, very little thing. Have you ever looked really close at your TV and tried to break the illusion of the video it's showing you, only to have your mom smack you upside the head and scream at you to back off before you lose your sense of smell? Well, you may have noticed that individual pixels make up the screen. These are called pixels, and they are squares, wouldn't you know? 
Most people know this, but the correlation between the pixels being square and the TV being square is actually the key to our shape shenanigans. Square pixels can be lined up and compacted to be seamless and leave no room between them, but let's take the squares in our equation into a hypothetical world where screens are round. If we had a screen that was an oval, for example, the pixels in turn would need to be the same shape. Look at what happens when we try to take thousands of ovals and attempt to compact them into a seamless image. The shape of the pixels prevents them from fitting against each other, and there are just as many thousands of gaps between each pixel. This would lead to more black being in the image, and in turn, a darker image overall. This is the key to why we've settled on squares and rectangles and not circles and ovals. So great, now you can impress all your friends with this TV knowledge next time you guys get together to watch Peppa Pig. But circles only make up about 33.3% of all shapes. What about all the other plausible and theoretical shapes like octagons and trapezoids? These ones we can cancel out with logic rather than going through more long historical events. So here are the flaws with the other shapes in a rapid fire montage. Octagons and hexagons are too close to circles to be viable. Pentagons are far enough away from circles, but have an odd number of sides, making it mathematically impossible to have an even number of aligned pixels. Slanted parallelograms and diamonds would only be able to show images that look like they're falling over. Triangles are known to be dangerously sharp when placed in the home. Trapezoids would incidentally give the perspective of either falling forward or falling backwards. And lastly, star shape would have been too Christmassy to have around all year long. So those are the ins and outs of why the centerpieces of our homes and recreational areas are tidy right-angled square allelograms. I personally think that being armed with any knowledge of anything is a gift. But you might ask yourself, who cares, right? Why does it matter what shape a TV is? Just consume the technology you're given. If it works, why question it? And to that I say, you clicked on this video. Who's, who's the real punk bass fish? Stupid! If you enjoyed this video, I could use all the support I could get because these take an immense amount of research, and most of the stuff I talked about isn't even documented on the internet, so you won't find my sources or confirmation of what I said, so feel free to refer people to this video if they ever question it. Thanks again, and remember to keep learning in the yearning.